In your basic open water training, you were likely instructed to ascend to the surface with 50 bar or 500 psi remaining in your cylinder. A practice stemming from the known inaccuracy of submersible pressure gauges at lower pressures. However, this guideline falls short in effective dive planning as it neglects to answer the critical question. At what tank pressure should I begin my ascent to safely return to the surface without risking injury or drowning? Arbitrarily deciding to end the dive when a team member reaches a certain pressure level is an unreliable procedure and may introduce risks potentially endangering lives or detracting from the overall enjoyment of the dive. It's imperative to calculate your reserve gas and turn pressure accordingly for a safer and more gratifying diving experience. Moreover, many divers place unwavering trust in dive guides and solely rely on their dive computers without questioning the soundness of the dive plan. Unfortunately, dive guides themselves may lack optimal skills, despite having good intentions which can lead to complications. Therefore, it's essential to possess a thorough comprehension of the objectives and rationale behind each dive activity to ensure your safety and that of those around you. Before delving into the specifics of calculating your gas plan, it's crucial to discuss the ascent strategy. Every diver should have one, as it determines the time needed to ascend from the deepest point of the dive and the speed of ascent, which forms the basis for all subsequent calculations. The conventional recreational DSAT strategy, likely familiar if you've received training from commercial diving agencies, involves a three-minute stop at five meters, often referred to as the safety stop. Although there are more efficient models accessible, we will stick to this example to maintain simplicity. Comprehending the optimal ascent rate holds significant importance. Despite more assertive suggestions prevailing, we advocate for maintaining a pace not surpassing 9 meters per minute. Nonetheless, a more gradual ascent remains the safer option. Based on this information, imagine a hypothetical dive to 30 meters. The ascent to 5 meters where the first stop is would take approximately 2.7 minutes. But for simplicity and a cautious approach, it's advisable to round this up to three minutes. Following a three-minute decompression stop, ascend directly to the surface. Considering the high pressure gradient in shallow waters, it's strongly advised to ascend slowly from five meters. Let's approximate the ascent time from this point to one minute. To account for contingencies such as managing the deployment of a DSMB or handling out-of-gas scenarios, we allocate an additional minute so the total ascent time for a diver to surface from 30 meters is calculated to be 8 minutes in total. Minimum reserve symbolizes the absolute minimum amount of gas needed for two divers to safely ascend to the surface from the deepest point of the dive, taking into account completing all decompression stops. Going beyond your reserve is not permissible. Remember, the gas you carry isn't solely for your own use. It's also meant for your team. Likewise, their gas is available to you in an emergency. By knowing our previously calculated total ascent time, we should be able to calculate the reserve gas needed to surface, but can we? The missing variable from this equation is the emergency or stress surface air consumption rate of each diver in the team. If you have previously calculated this for each member, you can take the highest one and use it as the base for the calculation. Alternatively, if you aren't sure, using a rate of 30 liter per minute is a safe enough bet. Furthermore, we note our average depth, which is 15 meters, based on the ascent profile outlined previously. To calculate the minimum reserve, you should multiply the ascent time by the emergency sack rate, then multiply this by the atmospheric pressure of your average depth, and finally, the number of divers, which is always two. This will give you the gas volume needed in your cylinder to complete the ascent. In order to convert this to a more meaningful pressure format, divide this by the size of your cylinder, so in our case 1200 liters divided by 11.1 .1 liter, which will result in 108 bars that you should round up to 110, so it's easier to read underwater on your pressure gauge. Having determined the absolute minimum gas required to safely bring two divers to the surface, from the deepest point of the dive, we can now calculate the remaining gas by subtracting the reserve pressure from the total pressure in our cylinder. Assuming we have one cylinder filled to 200 bars, after deducting the reserve pressure rounded up, we'll have 90 bars allocated for the dive. 
This constitutes the usable gas, indicating the amount available for the dive, while the rest serves as the minimum reserve. All prior calculations converge on one goal, determining your turn pressure, contingent upon the specific dynamics of your dive. If your intention is to conclude your dive without returning to the starting point and ascend directly to the surface, such as in drift diving, your turn pressure equates to the minimum reserve. Under these circumstances, the usable gas quantity delineates what you can employ before initiating your ascent. In scenarios encompassing both outbound and inbound phases, frequently encountered in shore diving, where you venture out to explore and then return to your entry point, the rule of halves governs the allocation of usable gas. This entails assigning half of the usable gas for the outbound phase and the remaining half for the inbound phase. Consequently, the turn pressure is determined by subtracting half of the usable gas from the total available gas. In our example, the turn pressure would be 155 bars. Once a team member reaches this pressure, the dive should be turned, effectively retracing your path and heading back to the entry point. Conversely, for overhead dives, planning adheres to the rule of thirds, a topic beyond the scope of this video. Reflecting on our example, considering a dive to 30 meters with an 11.1 liter cylinder filled up to 200 bars, our calculation yields a reserve of 110 bars and a turn pressure of 155 bars. However, if we adhere to the standard procedure of using thirds, allocating one-third for the outbound, one-third for the inbound phase, and keeping one-third as reserve, we would have a reserve of 65 bars and a turn pressure of 130 bars. Planning our dive based on thirds would evidently not provide sufficient gas for a safe ascent with two divers from the deepest point of the dive. When using cylinders of varying sizes within a team, it's crucial to consistently base reserve and turn pressure calculations on the cylinder with the lowest available liter amount of gas. The quantity of gas is determined not only by the cylinder's size, but also by the pressure to which the cylinder is filled. Equally important is that all team members follow the calculated turn pressure, regardless of the sizes of their individual cylinders. To conclude, relying solely on procedures advocated by most commercial agencies like the rule of thirds or maintaining a consistent reserve regardless of depth proves inadequate for ensuring safety during dives. In truth, these methods rarely provide sufficient gas reserves for you and your teammates in emergency situations. Reliable and cautious divers always calculate their gas requirements according to the particular attributes of the dive they intend to undertake. We recommend reviewing your dive log and computing the reserve for some of your deeper dives to determine if you had adequate gas for both yourself and your teammate, or if you were simply lucky to avoid emergencies. Thanks for watching and hope you learned something. Consider subscribing to Flow State Divers to become part of the community of conscious divers and to get notified on our upcoming content.